Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Aviation for GK. In this video, we will be discussing the design and operation of supersonic aircraft engine inlets. So, before I start with this video, if you are new to my channel, I would like to request you to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon on YouTube, and like the page, if you are watching on Facebook so that you won't miss any of my future videos. A convergent divergent inlet duct, fixed or variable, is required on all supersonic aircraft as shown in the figure. A supersonic transport, for example, is configured with an inlet that slows the airflow to the subsonic speed at the face of the engine, regardless of aircraft speed. Subsonic airflow into the compressor is required if the rotating airfoils are to remain free of shockwave accumulation, which would be detrimental to the compression process. In order to vary the geometry, or shape, of the inlet, a movable restrictor is often employed to form a convergent divergent CD, shape of variable proportion. The CD-shaped duct becomes necessary in reducing supersonic airflow to subsonic speeds. At this point, it is important to remember that at subsonic flow rates, air flowing in a duct acts as an incompressible liquid, but at supersonic flow rates, the air is compressed to the point of creating the familiar shockwave phenomenon. The supersonic diffuser type of inlet provides a means of creating both a shock wave formation to reduce air velocity and a variable convergent divergent shape to meet the various flight conditions from takeoff to cruise. Air velocity will drop to approximately Mach 0.8 in the back of the final shock wave and then to Mach 0.5 by diffusion. The figure shown illustrates a movable wedge that provides a similar function of convergence, divergence, and shockwave formation. It also has a spill valve to dump unwanted ram air overboard at high speed. Many high-performance aircraft have an excessive mass flow at cruising speeds. The Concorde inlets, shown in the figure, provide a good illustration of how complicated an inlet may have to be to take full advantage of the energy recovery that is possible. At the speed of sound, half the pressure needed by the engine for combustion may be provided by ram effect and the other half by compression through the engine. At twice the speed of sound, pressure ratios in the vicinity of 30 to 1 are possible, and at three times the speed of sound, this may rise to 50 to 1. As aircraft speed increases, the compression provided by the engine becomes relatively minor and there is no need for complicated anti-surge devices devices to stop pressure fluctuations in the compressor that can lead to damage and engine failure. The modest pressure rise over each of the compressor stages is such that control of fuel flow alone provides sufficient safeguards against the surge. So, that's all for today's topic. If you find this video informative, then please like, comment, and share it with others. And do not forget to like the page on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and follow on Instagram. If you have any queries, you can comment or reach me out on aviation4gk at gmail.com, also on Instagram and Facebook aviation4gk. Thank you again and see you in the next video.